I just wanted to, to bring that up. I don't know whether you want me to get into how to do that or just yeah, say that. Yeah, go for it. Whatever, whatever okay. you're feeling. <laughs> okay. So um, let's just, uh, just to get some terminology sorted out, let's say you're sitting on your horse in the halt and you're lined up a, um, parallel to a fence or a rail or whatever so that your horse's spine is absolutely parallel to that fence. And if you were to look at him straight on, his chin would be directly in front of the middle crease of his chest. The terminology I'm going to use, I'm going to call that a neutral or zero flexion. Flexion refers to the to the um, positioning of the horse at the pole, either to the left or to, to the right. The pole is right behind the ears. If you were to ask the horse to have a what I call a plus one flexion, you would be seeing his inside eyelash or his inside nostril. And the reason I'm calling it plus one is that his face is one inch to the inside of that neutral position. If you were to uh, ask for a minus one flexion and you're, um, you're next to the rail, but your inside leg, you're tracking to the left, so your left leg is facing toward the inside of the ring. So if you were to ask for minus one, you would be bringing the horse's head one inch to the right. So this flexion left or right is what's going to allow you to learn an exercise that will give you more control over the horse's shoulders. Now, that's, that's the when I talk about flexion, that's the degree that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about bending the neck. I'm talking about positioning the horse's head at the end of his neck, either one inch to the left or one inch to the right. Now, the action of your rein, there's all different kinds of actions that we have on the rein. The action of the rein that gives you flexion to the left or flexion to the right is to pretend that you have a key, hold up your right hand, pretend you have a key in a, in a door or you want to start your car, and you turn your entire hand so that you start with the thumb as the highest point of your hand, then you turn your hand so your fingernails point up toward your face for a second, and then you go back to your thumb at the highest point of the hand. You, As the highest point of the hand, you unlock the door, unlock the door, unlock the door. And the second thing, in addition to that action of the rein, is that you bring the hand not back toward your body, but a little bit toward the other hand. You don't cross over the withers, but you bring it toward the other hand so that when your hand is turned and your fingernails are pointed up toward your face, if you drew an imaginary diagonal line from your baby finger, it would go toward the opposite hip. And that's why that rain effect is called an indirect rain, because the action of the rain goes toward your opposite hip. So if you turn one wrist like that and you support with the other rein so that the horse doesn't bend his neck, you can get flexion left or flexion right. So as you learn how to turn the horse's shoulders, that's the first thing you need to learn how to do, how to flex the horse at the pole, either left or right. It's the entire hand that's turned. It's not a squeeze and release on the reins. If you squeeze and release on the rein, what you're doing is you are getting flexion, but you're getting flexion at the jaw as opposed to the pole. And when you get flexion at the jaw, all the horse does is closes that space between his head and his neck underneath it where the throat latch is on the bridle. So that's not what we're looking for. We don't want to use that action of the rein where you wiggle your fingers. You want to turn your entire wrist and bring your hand a little bit closer toward the other hand so you have that indirect action. Then once you can position your horse either in flexion, that's plus one, or counterflexion, that's minus one, you have the ability to move the shoulders in the opposite direction. So let's say you're circling to the left, which means your left leg is on the inside, and you wanted to counterflex the horse, so with your right wrist, you would unlock the door, unlock the door, and then if you wanted to make a corner, you would use your two hands as a unit, and you would take your two hands or your two forearms, if you will, and bring them in the direction you want to turn the horse's shoulders. So if we're circling to the left, we have right flexion, minus one flexion to the right, counter flexion. Your left hand comes to the left of your left hip, 
and your right hand comes very close to the withers. So the two hands move equidistant, maybe three or four inches, in the direction you want to lead the shoulders. So it's a good way for riders to learn about turning the shoulders. Flex the horse in one direction and then bring your two hands opposite the way you have them flexed and then walk for a little while and then change the flexion and bring your two hands in the other direction and learn how you have the capacity to move the shoulders either to the left or to the right. And then if you get in a critical situation and let's say your horse says, oh, I'm ducking out the gate, I'm running back to the barn, and you're tracking to the left, and he tries to run to the right, the worst thing to do is pull on the left rein to try to keep him in the ring. Change the flexion to the right and slide the shoulders over to the left, and you'll be able to turn him.